in search of darkness. All killer, no filler. <sighs> Hello, fellow followers. Welcome back to Fan Scene. Greg here, and today I have for you my review of In Search of Darkness Part 3, The Final Journey into 80s Horror, which is something I've been looking forward for a very long time to see after I backed the Kickstarter when I first heard about it. I, I have been privileged to help sell In Search of Darkness Part 2 and Part 3 to you guys and on my audience and people out there, and I am super Super glad that this final third entry in this film was so very good. So very good. This this one this one takes us beyond what we could possibly imagine. Because yeah, with the first In Search of Darkness, which is probably my all time favorite documentary ever, uh out this whole series is, uh, we got into like the the known 80s horror that probably a lot of us knew a lot of us within the horror community especially who love the 80s horror probably knew most of the movie that was in that first movie i uh, i knew most of them there was like maybe five or six that i really didn't know and then we moved on to in search of darkness part two and in that one there was a lot less i did not know i mean that's why i really love these uh documentaries because th they start to delve into this world of 80s horror the good the bad the 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 fun, the entertaining, the the misguided, the underappreciated, the the forgotten. Uh, so I really love that. And then part two, there was a whole bunch more that I did not know. And uh, we really got to dig deeper and we got to see new interviews with uh, Robert England, Linnea Quigley, and so, so many more. And in this third documentary, we go beyond, we go international, we go deep, deep, Take back in the video department, and I love the VHS aesthetic of this. It's got a much more like retro, nostalgic VHS uh, video store type feel to it, which I absolutely love. And I loved all the interviews on this. I loved that the movies that they went through on this. I loved uh, listen Carolyn Monroe in this documentary. I loved her interviews. Oh my God, that woman is still beautiful to this day. And just to hear her stories of, of the movies that she went with, with Joe Spinelli, all the movies that she was in, like from the Mexican horror movies and the, the British horror movies, Slaughter High. I, lo I loved I loved hearing those stories. And I loved listening to each movie. I mean, how we went from, as always, 1980 to 1989 and all these movies. There was so many movies I did not uh, know of. We explored Asian horror in this and uh, its cultural impact and how it's become so much bigger today. Asian horror, like Japanese horror and stuff like that, is being found more from the 80s, you know, and uh, it was just, it was, I gotta say kudos to Robin Block and David Weiner, my friend. Awesome job directing. Awesome job directing and putting this whole thing together. This massive thing. This is the longest. This is a beast of a documentary. Five hours and 41 minutes. I loved all five hours of it. It was it was incredible, and uh, it just horror movie after horror movie. Uh, that it just it was filled with so much more knowledge and appreciation for movies that um, were unsung. Just because, like I said, we go really uh, deep in archives in this. Yes, there's still movies in here that are mainstream and the, uh, uh, that we get to learn about stuff. They talk about critters. I love critters. It's one of my all time favorites. And we go deeper into that. We go into uh, uh, the last horror show, which I mentioned earlier with Carolyn Monroe. That just like really stuck out in my head because I really enjoyed Carolyn Monroe's interviews. There's something about it. I just I, I really did. Um, and then we also go into like movies like Things. Oh, yeah, we explore a lot of Canadian horror in this, which was crazy. And uh, things, man, that movie. <laughs> I agree with Chris Jericho in them and uh, Brendan Tenold, um, you know, it's the, probably the most Canadian movie on the list, and it's probably one of the worst movies. But uh, which we're reminded in this uh, that, you know, just because we think these, uh, some people think these movies, they're, they're not the worst because there are people that really enjoy the movie things. They really love it. They really find entertainment. And I don't really like it. I, <laughs> I, it's not my cup of tea, but I, the fact that there are so many people out that love that movie is, is just truly amazing. And it shows the power of these movies from the 80s. And I, yeah, maybe we look back on these with rose colored glasses, these movies. And, uh, you know, uh, it, but who cares? I mean, we love those movies. We, we They're a part of us. We grew up with them. And I really love how they did it. And I really love how this started off with like a quote from John Carpenter saying that when the critics start liking his movies, that's when he thinks he's in trouble. And we get uh, the Gene Siskel and uh, Ebert, Siskel and Ebert, uh, 
critic reviews throughout some of these movies where they just trash these movies. I really dug that part of this documentary and I loved hearing, hearing those little blurbs in between. <laughs> that was fun. That was a fun thing. And I, I absolutely loved uh, uh, the little mini documentaries in between like I did last time. And this, we got a really great ones. I love Dee Wallace on Dee Wallace. I loved hearing her. She's just so bubbly and fun and just to hear her stories of what she had. And then also I really, really enjoyed, um, the director's segment where they talk about famous director or the directors from that time and how they came to be. And I really love that they got, they brought in Wes Craven, John Carpenter, Stuart Gordon, and uh, George Romero, some of my all time favorites right there. And they talked a lot about Dario Argento. We got a lot of, you know, much more Italian horrorness, Canadian horror. We got uh, the satanic panic, which was pretty interesting because I was, I was really kind of worried how they were going to play that because how everybody is today, you know, there's this, you're either on this side, you're that side. I thought it was done pretty respectfully respectful how they covered uh, the satanic panic uh, that was that was because you know some people out there are religious and stuff and and uh you know maybe we you know that was a point of history that was a bit contentious which you know today <laughs> but uh, you know I, I thought that was very respectful and we got into a lot of like uh heavy metal and horror which go hand to hand and sex and horror which i still think we need more of that in horror movies a little tna you know, and I really loved listening to uh, Charles Band and uh, Lloyd Kaufman, William Lustig. Uh, great interviews all around. It's just a great documentary, fun, and a great capper to these documentaries. Because, like I said, like with the first one, that's like 80s horror. Like, yeah, you know, because what's I'm I'm guilty of myself is like saying, what's get 80s horror? Oh, Freddy Krueger, Jason. You know the you know the thing, John Carpenter, Halloween the Halloween sequels, even though Halloween was Saturday, but you know, I'm guilty of that. It's just like, like, that's the horror, but no, like with that, you get that in the first one and the second one, you go a little deeper and the third one, you go deeper and beyond. And I really think a lot of people are going to find a lot of movies in this third documentary that they've never seen. And that's going to become new favorites for them. And I know I, I made a list myself that I'm going to find some movies that I never knew about. And, uh, and now I want to see. So I'm really looking forward to searching those movies out. And uh, like it's also brought up in this, like I bring up here a lot on my channel, a lot of these movies, spe specifically a lot of these ones in the start documentary are being lost because they've never made that jump from beta to from beta VHS to Blu-ray to DVD to 4K to streaming because uh, the, the rights issues like Blood Beach which I'm so glad David Weiner got to put that in there because I know he was, you know, that was something he wanted to put out. That's you can't find it. It's still only on VHS. So uh, I would really got to say we got to preserve these movies. And it was fun. And, uh, oh, man, I can't explain to you guys how cool this is. But the fact that my little video I did about talking about how I love 80s horror and it stuff is in the credits, which, you know, you, everybody had an opportunity to send in a video to them. And they were going to put them in the credits as many as they can. The fact that mine is in the credits with John Carpenter and I'm a part of a doc. I mean, I'm a really small part of this documentary to, uh, you know, at, my name's in the credits as affiliate, as in a backer. And I have a video in the credits. The fact that I'm alongside a documentary with John Carpenter, with uh, Joe Bob Briggs and Darcy, Darcy too, cause he ends with the documentary with the stuff and William Lustig and just so many people that is just, I can't, <laughs> that is like and Charles Band, Charles. Oh my God! Growing up, seeing these movies, and now being a part of a documentary, even though I, it's just I can't explain to that. That is just like I'm. <laughs> I'm so honored. I'm so honored and grateful and thankful to everybody at Creator VC, uh, David Weiner, Robin Block, and uh, all you guys watching my video, whether it's five uh, or a thousand that I was allowed to, to, to go on a journey a little bit here and uh, be a part of a, something so cool, this documentary so cool, it, with some of my favorites of all times, Robert England. Robert England is in this, and I'm in this documentary, in, in the credits of my video I made, but that is just, oh my God, that, that touches me right there. Uh, but yes, if, you, if you're wanting to see this, I can't wait for everybody to get their copies out there. They're, you check your emails because uh, right now the digital copy is available. And when I get my physical copy, um, I will do an unboxing. That's going to be sometime in January. Um, I got part one on Blu-ray coming because I did. Unfortunately, I didn't get part one on Blu-ray, but now I got it with the, you know, when I backed on Kickstarter. And so now I'll have part one, part two, part three on Blu-ray, physical media for life. Um, <laughs> and I cannot wait to get that off that physical, the posters, all that good stuff coming my way. Um, wow. I just, I'm still blown away by being in the credits like that. And it was a really, really great 
documentary and a capper uh, to this 80s horror journey. Uh, awesome. So let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section down below. And if you liked what you saw here, please consider liking, subscribing, hitting that bell for notification, sharing the video off. I thank you guys for watching. Always support physical media. It is the superior format. Wherever you are, please have a great, safe, happy, healthy day, morning, afternoon, evening, and night. I'm going to go watch some 80s horror. Godspeed.